Welcome back, everyone. And today we're going to be working on something interesting. Um, we're going to do. We're going to actually try to force a, a perfect T pose. You know, um, a lot of meshes you can get online. They're already in T poses, but the bones sometimes aren't in perfect T poses. And most often, it doesn't really matter if they're in a perfect T pose or not. But if you're going to do like um, inverse kinematics, having a perfect T pose actually helps a lot especially when you do it um the ik solvers that i'm using um the perfect t pose actually makes things easier to manage it for the most part so we need to create a perfect t pose so um, what we're going to use is a, some of the same knowledge from the previous video where we talked about the the new ik solver i call i'm calling aim we're going to use the exact same idea of how we align everything but we're not going to do the um, the twisting aspect of it so we're going to use half the solver and we're just going to just just make copies of the small pieces of it so right now i have a i have a mesh and um right now i'm just only displaying the bones only 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 the bones and um as you can see, it's already in a T pose, but it's not a perfect T pose. Um, you, right now, you have the arms, right? And the arms are slightly angled. Um, they're not perfectly straight. They're, they're like, there's, there's just a slight curve from the shoulder to the upper arm to the lower arm. There's a nice curve, very, very, very light curve. If I'm going to do inverse kinematics and I say I need to every, I need to move the bones at like 75 degrees, these bones are already slightly off. So there might be like one bone might be two degrees off the other bones another two or three do you know five degrees off and now when i do the inverse kinematics i'm going to be a couple maybe 10 degrees off and that means i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna, ah, I'm gonna hit my i'm not gonna hit my mark like i'm not gonna reach the end effector correctly i'm gonna be off by a certain amount and that all depends on, on the rig that you're dealing with um so the solution for me to fix this when i'm doing um, inverse kinematics is just to force a full um T pose, like a complete T pose. So we just just align everything. We just grab all the bo the bones that we need and just straighten them out perfectly on a, a specific axis. So that's what we're gonna do, and it, it's really short. So this shouldn't be a long video. Um, so we're going we're doing about the exact same thing. I got a new thing in here uh, called Add Entity. someday I'll make a, probably make a video about the new uh, mesh loader um, that I put together, um, <clears throat> which kind of replaces my GL. TF loader. Uh, it actually doesn't use GLTF anymore. It actually uses my own format now. <laughs> um, so, in case you see that, no big deal. So, so the first thing we're going to notice that I have some information about the the indexes of my bones. So right now I'm not using the IK chain object or anything. I might actually rewrite that. Um, but right now I'm like right now I'm going to define a simple IK chain. A very simple just an array so i want to i want to align um i want to start aligning the arms and i'm going to do something fun i'm not going to align left arm and right arm i'm going to align the left arm first and then i'm going to mirror the results to the right side so this way you're not doing all the math repeatedly and uh re just recently i came i figured out i learned how to mirror quintorian so you guys get to see that new 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 trick because before when i was doing ik uh when i was doing these t poses i was actually doing one side and then the other now that i tested out this new you know new thing i can actually do one side and just mirror it mirror it perfectly it's awesome it's really cool very simple too how to mirror a quintorian i had no clue it was that simple um, so that's what we're going to do. We, we're going to move our left arm and this is the IK chain for our right arm. So we're just telling it our armature, basically all our bones. And it's like the array of, that contains all our bones. And we're going to say, we want to align everything on the left axis. So that's, that's really just the gist of it. And the, the main idea, the theory is behind this is that we're going to start so that's our chain. So we got the upper arm, we got the lower arm. We're going to start by grabbing the parent bone of whatever the upper arm is, where the chain starts, because we need its world position. Everything has to be done in world space. So we're going to grab the world space position of the parent, and then we're going to add the local space of our child, because we need the world space parent to translate world space child right back into local space child. So, so we, we always need that world space parent value to, to translate back and forth between the, bo the, the child bones local and world space. So we've done this a lot, but in case you're new, 
that's you know that's the gist of it. So so here we go. We're gonna go down right into the function. We got the left chain. We got the right chain. We got our armature, and we got the direction up. And if you haven't, if you didn't see the last video, what we're gonna do is instead of doing all these um, weird like quintorian things, we're just gonna build a quintorian based on a three axis, the axes, an up, down, uh, no, an up, a left, and a four direction. So when, once we define an orthogonal um, three of three directions, uh, those main three directions, we can apply it to a function that converts that into a quintorian. So this way we can actually perfectly control our quintorian, uh, its direction and twist in all in one go, um, which is kind of neat. Um, yeah. So, so that's that's the really that's the big gist of what we're doing. So that's why I say up. We're passing the the value left because left is going to be the up position. And, and in case you don't realize, like I said, in case you're new, um, the bones, right? Like right now, the, everything you see right now is a bone, and the axes are the colored. So green is forward, red is left, and the long end is up. So even though we always perceive the bones to point, um, you know, with the pointy end f going forward. That is really not the forward direction of bones, especially you know, especially when you import them from Blender. When Blender, uh, the 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 pointy end of the bone is is it's the up direction. But a lot of them. But when we're dealing with quint quintorians, we're always dealing with four directions, really. It, the way I interpret it, quintorians anyway. So every time I, I deal with quintorians, I, it's always with the forward direction being changed. So that's why I kind of like this idea of building quintorians based on um, the, the orthogonal axis, axes, axes, uh, because it just makes it easier just to define where we want everything to go. So, so I'm telling, I'm, I'm passing in the function left because that's where I want my forward direction to be. But the forward direction I'm going to translate as the up direction. So, so kind of doing that weird translation where I'm saying this is my forward direction, but I'm going to apply that forward direction as the up direction of the bone because the bone's true forward is actually up. It's it's a little confusing, but after a while you kind of get used to it. Um, bones aren't don't follow that kind of axis. Um, everything kind of makes sense when you're dealing with like. Um, Spline, spine, spine, the spine and head, because then you you then forward makes more sense. But when you're dealing with the limbs, it, things are a little a little wonky. Um, so there we go. So let's see. We're gonna get the world space of the parent. So that you know we're gonna save everything in onto world space. Um, uh, world space parent variable. It's a quintorian, and um, that's gonna be the the first chain, which would be zero of our bones. And BB is just a shortcut, so I don't have to type in arms dot bones all over the place. All right, so we're gonna get the bone that we were dealing with. So it's gonna be the first bone of the chain because this is gonna be a loop. So this way we can do multiple uh, bones like chains at a time. And um, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna build our world uh, contorian, our world space child contorian. And um, you might see that my math library is different because I've been we're, working with Rust a lot lately. So I'm kind of adding new functions to the math library that that's more Rust-like, like API-wise and how it works. Because it just it it, it flows. It like uh, I, when I learn new programming languages, there's like really cool new ways of writing code that actually makes sometimes makes more sense. So so the code right now actually looks to me looks cleaner than I've done in the past. So in case you're wondering, like what what this from mole means, um, I'm I'm building this quintorian based by based on the fact that I'm multiplying these two quintorians. Normally I do them in reverse. Like I have to use a p mole. So if you if you're like a normal <laughs> uh, person that watches the series, you know I'll be using p mole a lot. But that's because because I'm using quintorians differently. But this function, I'm building the WC from this function. So, so like I said, it and, and all we have to do is take world, world, and multiply it by our local for the child, and that creates our child's world space rotation. So, doom, boom. So we got we got the world, uh, the child's world space um, rotation. Uh, 
rotation. So the next thing we need to do, like since we know what up direction is, it's going to be the left direction. Now we need to keep the orientation of the bone. So the easiest solution that I came up with, especially for the last video for uh, the, the AIM IK solver, is that if we know the up direction we're going to be, let's try to keep the forward direction of the bone. So we take the forward, we take a forward direction, make a copy of it, and then we transform it based on our world uh, space transform or uh, rotation for our child bone, the bone that we're currently working on. So now, so now, now we have two directions. We have our up that we know we want the left, and then we have our new uh, forward direction, uh, forward direction that's based on the actual bone's world space forward direction. Uh, from there, we do we 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 calculate left, and we calculate left using a cross product, and we and it has to be in this specific order. It has to be up and forward. If you do forward and up, you'll get a, a, the the axis is going backwards. Instead of pointing left, it ends up points pointing right. So the order doesn't matter. Uh, make sure you when you when you do a cross product that you do in the right order, and you're getting the, the left direction and not right. It'll screw you up if you're because um, you'll end up flipping things. Um, so this, so now we got left. So we got our left direction, and now we have to recalculate the four because everything needs to be orthogonal. When we're building uh, quintorians with um, three directions, they need to be orthogonal. And if you don't know what that means, that means every angle is ninety degrees of each other. Up and left are ninety degrees. Le left and whatever. All, all three, all three angles. Uh, are 90 degrees of each other so just keep that in mind that's very very important we need to do that that's why we have to because the forward the up direction that we want is set in stone we want that that's not going to change so by by get by cross prodding using cross product to get our left now we have a good idea where the left direction is at that point the forward direction isn't perfect because the forward direction is just a an idea just just an idea of where the bone is it, since we're changing the up direction the four can might not be exactly the same spot but it's this it's the same general direction that we want to be pointing at for the most part so that's why we kind of just need to fix the four direction to make sure everything's 90 degrees or our rotations are going to be really screwy so that's why we got to realign the four direction um so what there? Uh, let's see. What after that? I, re I recalculate the world space uh, child child from axis. So we pass in our left direction, our up direction, our forward direction, and that has our new world space rotation. Now we need to convert it back into local space. So we we again we use from all and we invert our world space parent and multiply by our world space child, and that gives us our local space child. Um, now we need to do one more thing. Um, and like in the last video, I said that sometimes when you you're dealing with this, the the axis of rotation is inverted. Even though the bones look like they are perfectly aligned, the 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 axis being in reverse and wrote and and um, so it really screws you up. It actually messes up the vertices. So we're gonna need we need to fix that. And this like the simple way to find out if the axis is backwards is we take our a local space quintorian, our new local space quintorian, and we do a dot product with the bones um, bind. Right now I'm not using the actual like it is the bind, but um, you should really probably like if you should have like a I should probably be using a this one uh for for my system anyway my system i have like a a, a, a node no actually it, it would be uh, it wouldn't be bone it would be uh whatever the bind value <laughs> i know it is it's, it's bone dot bind dot rotation that's what for my system is but i'm not using that i'm using just the node um component instead of the the bone component because it's ecs framework um, but just keep that in mind that you want to use the bind pose uh, rotation uh, because the local rotation for my like can change because that's really just what's currently there. So if you're moving the your bones a lot, um, 
that's going to screw you up. So just keep that in mind that when you're, when you're doing this dot product check, and when you're doing a lot of this, you want to use the bind post rotation, the, the, the initial rotation for the bones. So like I said, just keep that in mind. Even though I'm doing this is wrong, but that's because I'm going to run this. The moment I, I load up an, uh, or, um, the moment I load up an, um, an armature, I'm going to run the T post thing. So this way I never really need to worry about it. But for, in case you don't mess, you, you guys are doing things then doing the T pose, then you'll see things don't work as, as well. So just keep that in mind. So again, when you get that dot product, if the that dot product is under zero, we call negate, and negate actually just multiplies is basically just multiplying the entire contorion by negative one. You don't have to multiply; you can just change the um, just change the, the 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 sign. Like this is negate. That's it's just just flipping the sign. If it's a positive, you switch it to negative. If it's negative, it's a positive. So you don't actually have to do a multiplication um, thing. All you do is flip the, the the final bit of an integer, or the, in this case, a float binary. <laughs> um, so let's see how much time I spent on this. No, way, way, long, way longer than I wanted to. Um, uh, so if it's under zero, that means the axis is screwy. All we have to do is negate it, flip all, all, the, all the signs, and now our rotation is perfect. It's ready. Um, so we then set that local space rotation right, right back into the bone. So now, now it's saved. It's good to go. Um, and at the same time, I'm going to take the right chain and set its rotation and use the mirror. So I have the local space for the left, and I'm using that local space left uh, rotation, mirroring it and saving it right back to the right chain. So this way, I, I, I line the left side, I'm going to copy the mirror to the right side, and now I'm done. I finished two bones in one go. Um, and in case you haven't seen it, mirroring a quartorian is actually surprisingly easy. I thought it was going to be very difficult. Um, if you want to mirror X, you negate the other two axes. Because in case you don't know what a quart how a quartorian is put together, it has um, three axes and then the uh, the 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 X, Y, Z, W, right? That's the order of a quartorian tends to be. So X, Y, Z, it's kind of like the, ax the axes. It's kind of like an eel, eel, uh, Euler rotation, kind of. Not not really, but kind of it is. You can interpret it as an Euler, but with some magic thrown in <laughs> or, or mystery. And then, so so I know X is going to be my zero because I use arrays. So if I want to mirror by X, I negate Y and Z. Uh, leave the, the rotation part, W, leave that alone. Don't do anything with W. All you do is just modify the axes. So if you want to mirror Y, then you just negate X and Z. And same thing if you want to if you want to mirror Z, you negate X and Y. So right now, most often, I'm only going to mirror X. So that's why I made a function for it. just mirror X and call it a day. Um, and that's it. And then when I'm completely done, I take my world parent and I update it with our world child because the world child is the current bone I'm working on. So now when the loop starts up for the next bone, now it's like I said, I'm done with the upper bone. Now I want to work on the lower bone. That becomes my new world space location. And then I grab the world space location for the next bone. And by you and I you can use my upper bone world space, multiply it by my a lower arm, a local space to get that. So, so this instead of recalculating the entire, you know, like because when you, when you have when you calculate world space, like when I when that function that calculates world space, it grabs this bone, then grabs this bone, then grabs this bone, then this bone, this bone, and then kind of like kind of adds it all together, and that I finally get the world rotation. Instead of doing that for every single bone, I start with the first bone that way, and then the, fine, the any other bones afterwards, I can just keep adding on to it. So this way, you're processing-wise, you're not constantly redoing all that processing. because You really don't need to. If, once you know the world space of the upper arm, just move on and just just keep just keep going and just keep going. So that's how I wrote the function. So you only, you only do a full ch uh, parent lookup once per chain. 
And ideally, if you're if you're gonna do like a full IK type of system, you kind of work up the up the chest, and then you kind of work out, and then this chest out. So this way, you don't have to actually do it, especially if you're doing a lot of IK stuff. You you start at, you start at the hips, and then you branch out. Um, and that's it. So when it's all said and done, if I refresh, now you can tell that these two bones are now perfectly straight perfectly straight but the orientation stays where they were and as you can see both arms are perfectly straight the end you know it's like it's like i said you do one side you can easily mirror it and it per works pretty well for me um and for the second function exact same function i'm just going to pass in the left leg and the right leg and i just want to say align it toward the, the down axis axis refresh again they save it save it refresh again there you go now see now i got a perfect pose perfect pose the legs are perfectly straight from the the straight from the hip straight down and then from the shoulder out is perfectly on a perfectly straight line uh, i can take a step further and align the arm the hand but i usually use the uh, I don't need to. I don't. I don't go all the way down to the hand for IK. I just stick with the two bones. That usually um, that works well out for me. Um, but yeah, there you go. And like, if I really wanted to, I can do the same thing with the spine. You know, I would align the spine first, and then I'll align the arms, then I'll align the legs, and that's it. But uh, like, I don't need. I don't need to. Like, I haven't gone to the point where I need to straighten out the the, the spine. But like I said, the, the function works. It just you start with the chain, and it just moves forward, right through it whatever chain you give it um like this function might just need to be fixed work because a spine doesn't have a mirror but uh there you go and just to show that the bones do not break anything i'll switch this to loading up the mesh along with the the armature and there you go and there's vegeta his are his legs are perfectly straight his arms are perfectly straight and again if you want to see why this is important so what happens if I don't negate it? If the refresh, you get that weird. You get some damage. It's for some reason I always get the damage all around the legs for Vegeta. Um, but yeah, you you'll see around the hips on both legs. There's some some vertice damage. Uh, but again, like I said, negating it fixes it. Everything's perfect again. So there you go. Perfect T pose. You now, if you have any bone system that you want, now you can actually straighten out any bones you want. And then once all the bones are nice and straight, now when you want to say when you want to roll to uh, ro uh, rotate by a certain degree on a certain axis, everything will align exactly where you need it to be. And trust me, I did. I'm I'm way I'm like four videos ahead <laughs> when it comes to coding. So all this stuff I need to do to get to where I need to get to. So I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I uh, hope there's some cool tricks. Like I said, we we showed off the the aim IK solver from the previous video. Different different things you can do with that concept of building a contorian based based off um, an orthogonal axis. Um, learn how to how to how to mirror a contorian, uh, which is kind of neat. That's a cool little trick that I, I just, after two years of doing this is the first time I only saw it. I mentioned once on one forum and i thought it was an awesome idea um and uh yeah so there you go a uh, great video um so yeah now now we got the our ik so we're gonna next video we're gonna do the limb solar so this way now now we know how to aim everything we we have all our bones straightened out in the next video we're gonna work on when i'm gonna show you the, the limb solver and uh, some of the math it's really simple it's just it's just triangles i've done the done them before but we're gonna do a new one and this time with meshes and we're gonna like i said we're gonna, it's, it's gonna it's the new limb solver now uses the new aim solver to get everything perfectly aligned so this way we can control the the rotation of the arm as long and plus how to bend the elbow um, the aim becomes a big part of that new uh, rotation. And aligning everything is a lot simpler uh, since like six months ago when I created, or six or eight months ago when I created the original limb solver. So, yeah, so we're, we're plowing ahead with IK and we're dealing with real meshes. And uh, so this way we can, see, we, we can see if we're doing the math wrong. Like I said, 
when I when 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 I don't do that negation, you see that the, even though the bones look right, the vertices don't look right. So um, yeah, so this way we're actually really building IK. We're building real IK that really um, works. <laughs> it might not, it might not be the best IK. You know, it's like I don't know if there's more efficient ways of doing these things, but we're getting there. We're figuring it out as we go. Um, no one wants to teach us, so we'll figure it out, right? That's how it works. If you just figure it out, just hammer it away. So I hope you enjoy the video. Um, I guess I'll see you guys next week when we deal with uh, the limb solver. Uh, that'll be fun. That, that might be a long video because those math-heavy ones tend to be, and uh, this one's longer than it needs to be. So let me end it without saying any long, blurby things. Uh, sorry if I'm muffly with my my talking today i'm a little tired <laughs> long day so um yeah see you guys in the next video and like i said hope you enjoyed and hope you learned something bye bye